Hey guys, we have a quick video today looking at a very interesting resin from Mac 4D called Tyco H. And according to the company, this stuff is not only fire retardant, but it's also heat resistant up to 500 Celsius or 930 Fahrenheit, which is pretty impressive. They reached out and asked us to try something that is, frankly, it's crazy. It's crazy, there's no way two ways about it. There's no way this was ever gonna work. They just wanted to see what would happen. Uh, they wanted us to try printing a mold and casting some metal into it, which went exactly as you might think it would have, uh, pouring hot metal into plastic. Uh, so let's tell you all about how that went. We chose this design because from the little that we do know about die casting, uh, designs have to be a uniform thickness for the best results, uh, or rather the simplest results. You can cast a lot of things, thin or thick, but it comes, you get, you get issues when you do that. And we also didn't want to do something super boring, just like, you know, a sphere. So we tried to do something a little bit more festive uh, with the springtime, so we went with this bunny peep. So as I've already alluded to in this so far, uh, this is not a good idea. We are doing this as casting working professionals. We have a fully ventilated system. We had uh, you know, fire extinguisher on site. We had help doing this. Uh, I do not recommend you try this in your backyard, in your garage, in your basement, anywhere at all. It, just don't do this, okay? This was a fun project to try, but this is in no way something that should be done by anyone who doesn't know what they're doing. Die casting is pretty much done cold by comparison to other methods of casting that we're more familiar with, such as lost resin or lost wax casting, where the mold is typically very hot, like 1000 Fahrenheit. In this case, the mold was just warm enough so that we didn't create like a condensation explosion when we poured the hot metal into it. Uh, but that's, of course, best done when the dye material itself is also made of metal, so you can have it a little bit higher. This plastic was like warm to the touch at best. You, we couldn't really do a whole lot. I did use a, a flame torch to preheat it, but I didn't get any temp readings. Um, either way, I, I knew that I could handle it physically, so it wasn't really the best situation for die casting. That's one big ding against this particular viability for casting metals into it, because you can't really get it to the point where the metal entering the mold can fill those details. Another big problem um, with this whole method, this whole idea, is that being a jewelry focused channel, the typical selection of metals that we can handle, like bronze, silver, gold, uh, are all pretty much out of the question for in terms of melt temps. Uh, well over double what this material is rated, so we did have to get a little bit creative. Anyone who's been following this channel for a very long time, I don't know how many of you are actually out there, uh, you may recall a video that we did in ye old days where we built a foundry where we were trying to melt some aluminum. So we dug up some of the, uh, the aluminum pucks that we had from that build and uh, we decided to use that as our metal. The casting temp of aluminum is quite a bit higher than what this material is rated for at about 650 Celsius or about 1300 Fahrenheit, but the list of safe, low temp materials is very slim below aluminum. Lead is obviously out of the question um, because it's unsafe, and uh, the melt temp of that is 295C, which really wouldn't have been too much of a challenge for this material. Pewter is much safer, and it does melt around 330 Celsius, but again, it's not a huge challenge for the material, and I wasn't really able to source any reliably in time for this video. Tin is even lower than that, uh, 235 Celsius, not high enough to challenge. Uh, and then there was zinc at about 420 Celsius, but this is a very hard material to work with due to the rapid oxidization that happens, uh, which can cause major health problems, and we're just not set up for that. And just to reiterate the safety component of this channel, um, we're all about doing things in a way that makes sense for a business practice. Occasionally we throw something at the wall and see if it sticks and we can just see if we make it work. But if it doesn't make sense long-term business-wise, uh, ultimately we don't push it any further. Anyways, this was a very tough one any which way you look at it because it's not really meant to be done. Die casting can be difficult when you know what you're doing and when you have the right materials. And this experiment really doesn't, none of those describe this experiment at all. So what exactly is this material good for? Well, in the time that I've spent printing with it, I came up with these. These are two part molds that I designed in CAD for 
uh, injecting or even just hot pouring from the top uh, custom sized wax sprues. Uh, I, for one of the jobs that we were doing, we had to have something very thick and heavy for the center column. Uh, I can normally get about 3 eighths of an inch or 10 millimeter center column sprues, but I needed to go up higher than that, so I went to 14 millimeter. These things work excellent. We were able to just put a washer on the top and some uh, binder clips on the sides and inject wax in. The surface finish of it was is, is glassy. It's beautiful. You don't have to do any kind of silicon mold spray, so that's excellent as well. Uh, we also did some different shaped sprues. These ones are uh, they're like a double wide because we needed to have uh, more material flow into the cavities, but we didn't want to have more sprues. I'm not really how to I don't know how to describe it, but we needed that shape of sprue, so just go with it. Um, if you guys out there are familiar with casting with fine silver, then maybe this makes some sense, um, having large, large sprues to feed into that material. These were also the first prints that we actually got to work with this particular resin. Um, something about this material that is incredibly frustrating, <laughs> let's put it that way, to be light. Uh, something incredibly frustrating about this material, because of all the fillers that they've added into the liquid to make it heat resistant and stable and tough. It is so hard to print. I cannot emphasize that enough. I did find ideal settings after I had burned through most of a bottle. So that was a big problem. The other issue is that this material doesn't really follow the typical milliliter to weight ratio. So if it was saying that uh, my print would have 170 milliliters of material, it would actually use up a lot more than that. And I believe it was because of that filler. It's just, it's, it's the opposite way of most casting resins. Casting resins tend to come out a little bit lower in terms of their milliliter weight to metal ratio. This one was much higher. So anyway, the point is, is that we burned through these bottles very quickly. They did send us two bottles and I am now completely out of it. Another really good use for it would be molds. So these particular ones are for RTV molds. They're frames, you put uh, pieces of glass on the side and then you pour the silicone in the top. If you were to do vulcanized molds with the, the Tyco H that can stand, I think the highest vulcanized rubber that I've ever used is 350 uh, Fahrenheit. And there are others that are much, much lower. You could in theory print your own vulcanized mold frames that can go into your vulcanizer withstanding that heat and the pressure. You could have uh, debossed information on the molds so that you would have a place like a logo or something for an artist that you're making the molds for. There's, there's endless ways that you could customize the molds. So that would be a really useful tool in our space. So one of the questions that we see on Reddit often is, is there a material that we can use to cast into again and again that won't degrade, that you can use with low temp materials, uh, much lower than aluminum, uh, to create whatever you want over and over? Is there a material that actually fits that bill? So going back to that statement we made um, about making sense in a business sense, this material is 270 US dollars per one kilogram bottle. So if you're doing low temp metal castings into alternative materials, it could still likely be more cost effective for you to research the high temp silicone or rubber materials used in like enamel pin factories. As unless you have a very high markup item that you're selling, you're probably not gonna be able to recoup the cost of this material or benefit nearly as much as some of those other ones. However, if you're in the higher markup space or industrial where you need to have a high temp product that's you know, really hard to get or it was custom, then this might be a solution for you because you can just have the CAD design, print it, make adjustments on the fly. $270 a bottle in industrial terms is actually pretty manageable. Um, there are applications for it. I just don't see it in the um, die casting method. That's just not really in, in play here. So thank you to Mac4D for sending us a couple bottles of Tyco H to play around with. It was very interesting to kind of do something really, really different uh, for once. We don't really get a chance to step outside of the typical casting too often. So that was kind of fun. Uh, and a special thank you to you guys as the viewers for watching. If you like to see this kind of content, uh, leave a comment down below and we'll see what other kind of exotic materials we can find for you. I will see you guys in the next video. Have a good one.